In our last episode, we talked about a typical balanced investment portfolio, which consisted of equities and fixed incomes. In this episode, we're going to go into more detail on what to put in your investment with our favorite investment portfolio. I'm Raymond. And I'm MTS. And welcome to On My Financial Goals, where we go over personal finance videos for you Canadians. First, we want to say that if you haven't seen our previous video yet where we introduce investing, please check it out right now. You can click on our cards linked on the top right of our video or in the description below. We introduced a typical portfolio which consisted of equities like stocks and fixed incomes like bonds. As we mentioned before, it can become a bit daunting to pick stocks. So instead of handpicking stocks, why don't we look into mutual funds? What is a mutual fund? You can think of a mutual fund as a type of investment that encompasses a range of stocks. There might be a tech-focused mutual fund or a gold and minerals-focused mutual fund. The list really goes on and on. It works by everyone participating in the mutual funds paying into their cut, however much it is. And then the fund manager manages all these funds together for a portfolio. What's different between a mutual fund and a stock is that you don't have to limit yourself to buy exact units. What this means is that you can buy as much or as little as you want and still have a slice of the pie because the fund manager takes the pool of money contributed by everyone and invests it accordingly. But the problem with actively managed mutual funds like this is that the fund manager has to get paid and it's usually at the expense of a high management expense ratio or MER for short and this typically hovers around 2.5% to 3%. Also, they're always trying to beat the market and it's a well-known fact that most actively managed mutual funds have a very difficult time beating this. It's just a very difficult thing to predict. Since we know that it's very hard to beat the market, what do we do now? Ever heard of the saying, if you can't beat them, join them? Well, that's exactly how index investing works, or more specifically, the Canadian cash potato portfolio. Instead of trying to beat the market, you simply try to match the market as close as possible. That's right. How it works is that we choose indexes that replicate the market. There are two main ways we can do our index investing. One way is through investing in passively managed mutual funds. Now that we're trying to match the market, the mutual fund manager for a passively managed fund doesn't need to work as hard. This is just matching an already existing index like the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, or they choose the top equities in that category. This translates to your MER fees for these types of mutual funds to be a lot lower, something like 0.3 to 0.6%. The second way is through an exchange traded fund or ETF for short. To sum up what an ETF is, they work kind of the same way as a mutual fund, but traded like a stock. We will get into this in another video. So now let's go over a typical Canadian couch potato strategy now that we've established how ETFs and passively managed mutual funds work. We can use Tangerine's investment fund model as an example. It is a mutual fund that consists of US stocks, Canadian stocks, international stocks, and Canadian bonds. The U.S. stock portion is followed by the general U.S. stock market, which is the S&P 500. The Canadian stock portion is followed by the general Canadian stock market, which is the TSX. The international stock follows the MSCI and the Canadian bonds, which follows the fixed income requirement. We feel this is a great way to invest because not only are the fees low, but you also have a highly diversified portfolio. Did you ever hear of the saying, never put all your eggs in one basket? That's exactly what this is right now. There are three principles to follow through and we'll break it down for you. Your asset allocation should be based on how much risk you're willing to take. If you're young and willing to take on some more risk, you can put less in bonds and more on equities. You are prone to more volatility, bigger ups and downs, so keep that in mind. As a general rule of thumb, your bond allocation should match roughly your age. This makes sense because as you get older, you don't want to take as many risks. For example, if you're 25 years old right now, that would mean 25% of your portfolio should be in a bond index, and 75% of your portfolio should be distributed towards Canadian, US, and international indexes. The reason we diversify the bond and equity allocation is because they are generally inverse of each other. For example, when bonds are doing well, usually stocks are doing poorly. The same is true usually the other way around. It's just a great way to have your bases covered. And this ties into our next rule, where you should commit to being into this investment strategy for the long run. If you plan to use this investment strategy for a quick buck, this will not work for you. We would almost say you're better off keeping things in a high interest savings account if you need the money soon, something like within the next one to five years. This investment strategy works best when you invest young. So stay committed and let the power of compound interest and time in the market do the work for you. The last route to follow is rebalancing. Over the cycle of your investment, it might get skewed towards 
the equities or the bonds. We'll get into more on this in another video, but essentially it means that you should rebalance your portfolio once a year or so because the key to the Canadian cash potato portfolio is staying consistent with your targeted allocation. And that's pretty much the basics of index investing, which is the backbone of the Canadian couch potato model. We know this is a lot to take in, so we're going into tutorial videos next where we show you step by step on setting it up. We will say though that Tangerine and Simply Investments funds actually make this very easy. They do have slightly higher fees than other methods, but the advantage is that the template is all ready for you and they even rebalance for you. If you're interested in purchasing your own mutual funds or ETFs, which have lower fees but slightly more work than Tangerine and Simply's investment funds, hint, there's math involved. Stay tuned for the following videos where we'll give a step-by-step -step tutorial. The last thing we want to close off with is that this is what we personally believe is the easiest DIY portfolio that you can do with minimized fees. There are many other ways to invest and we don't want to be the people to tell you how you should invest your money. Think of it as our recommendation as a simple and easy way to get your feet wet in the world of investing. So that wraps up this week's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow and comment on our videos. See you all next week.